Welcome back, Saints. I'm Sophie DeRoy. And I'm Mason Shields. And this is SFHS Today. In world news, Colombia closed its borders preparing for a national strike, overrising unemployment and social unrest against the government and President Ivan Duque. In this region, Ecuador, Chile, and Bolivia had already experienced similar events this year fueled by corruption, slowing economies and inequality. In national news, the Mesa County Valley School District 51 in Colorado closed more than 40 schools due to a virus outbreak. The virus rapidly spread to the school's population. According to CNN, nursing coordinator Tanya Marvin said in a statement, we are taking this highly unusual action because this virus is extremely contagious and spreading quickly across our schools. In school news, last Tuesday, November 19, was the first trimester art show. Here's reporter Grace Finesse showing off some of the talent we have here at SFHS. I feel very surprised, but I appreciate all of the all of the goals. It, you know, it helps me as an artist. I didn't think I was going to win because there were some really good paintings there, but I feel pretty proud that I won. It's kind of cool. I don't know. I didn't expect to win it. Well, I feel weird. I didn't think I was going to win, honestly. I just did it and I just did it for fun because that's what I just wanted to make and I didn't think I was actually going to win. That's what we did. I chose to draw Bing Crosby because I very much enjoy listening to him and he was a big part of my life, especially during Christmas time. We were supposed to take a picture of nature outside with like a special lens on our phone, and I found a grasshopper, and it kept jumping away, and then I just like finally got it to stop moving. And then I got just kind of wanted to do like um, a nighttime scene with some buildings. I did some research online. I was like, oh, that looks cool. Let's do that. I like I like dragons, so. Like growing up, I like just draw them like all the time back then. So basically, so yeah, it was just satisfying after finishing. We were supposed to choose like the best picture we took all trimester, and I went through all of them, and I liked that one the most. Thought it was unique. Also, last Tuesday was the Futures Prep finale class held their mock interviews. Reporter Caitlin Riley asked Don Abraham, the head of the Career Center, and some students their thoughts on this important day. Hey, I'm Caitlin. This week I went out and found out more about the mock interview and what it's about. Mock interviews are um, part of the coursework for students who take Futures Prep Finale. Um, it's one of the assignments that they need to complete in that course. Um, I believe the mock interview prepares you for life because that's what you have to do in the real world and every job you get, whether it's getting hired at Subway or a professional job, you have to interview for the job. Well, the lady that I talked to was actually a boss, so she really had insight about what I should be saying to my boss or to a future empl employer that I have. Um, it kind of let me know like what they're looking for and what would actually make them happy in what I do, so it helped a lot. So every year we contact um, a lot of our community members around the area. We have a lot of contacts with local businesses and people in the area who will volunteer their time to come in and conduct the interviews with our students so they get a very real life experience. So during the interview, they ask us a variety of questions. It's like your strengths, your weaknesses, um, who you are, and why you're applying for the position. Before the interview, we had a few weeks to kind of work on our um, application and our resume, which was kind of just showing what we've done through our high school careers and what kind of jobs we've had and also what experience we would have in the future. Um, we also kind of worked on working on a cover letter, which was basically saying the same thing. Uh, in the interview, she kind of asked me about what I would do about conflicts and about uh, what would I do if I had to get more hours or something like that. Um, also, the handshake was very important. Shake her hand twice, um, and it was very firm, and mine you know, had to make up for it. So overall, I think it went pretty well. Um, overall, it was a great experience. I'm glad I did it. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. It wasn't very bad at all. She was really nice about it, and even when I would stutter or something like that, she would just kind of smile at me, and it really wasn't something I had to worry about. Every year, Joel Olson and his yearbook staff put together a yearbook that documents the school year for SFHS. This week, reporters Caitlin, Jack, and Sophie have put together a sneak peek of what's to come this year in the yearbook. 
So the point of having a yearbook is we use it as a historical record. So our library actually keeps all of the yearbooks that we've ever had and you can actually go and check them out, like look at them in the library. But it's also like a memory book for people to look back on when they've graduated and see like what happened their senior, junior, sophomore, freshman year at high school. We always have a senior section where we have senior portraits. So the seniors are able to, to turn in that special picture of themselves after, you know, after going through 12 years of school. And uh, I guess one of the really nice things is the grad ad section for seniors. Their uh, parents or students themselves can, can purchase an ad or something like an ad that goes in the back of the book where they can send their own pictures in and create their own memory page. So our theme is 2020 Rewind. So it's kind of a bit of a throwback theme. It's got a lot of like the retro kind of look to it. Uh, like a 70s look, we have like Polaroids and VHSs and cassette tapes in it. I really enjoy working with the group of people. Usually when I've done it, we've had really good groups of people and just seeing how everybody will work together to like make our ideas stick and come through in the yearbook that we create. Getting, making sure that all the students are in the yearbook making sure that everybody is in the yearbook in an equal amount of times and we're not just covering a, a specific demographic of the yearbook. For me, the challenge is uh, getting things done through people. And it's like running a small business, really, because the yearbook staff, all of the, the students, do all the work, I guess. Ms. Lundquist would say that's obvious because I never do any work, but the students actually create all the content they do all of the page designs. The students are responsible for selling the yearbook, for distributing the yearbook. And so uh, I think it's a really good experience for them because it's unlike any other class in the high school where you have, you have some freedom, but you also have a really big job that you have to get done. With this trimester coming to an end and a new one starting next Monday, class sizes have become a concern to teachers, students, and administration alike. Here's reporter Cody Perfetti on class sizes and what to expect in this coming trimester. Class sizes this year have sure increased. Let's see what students and staff have to say. What are your thoughts on the larger class sizes? Um, I think it, it makes it so you can't learn as much because it's harder for the teacher to have one-on-one -on -one time with you if, you're, if she's always helping another student and she can never get around to you. Uh, well, one, you know it affects the larger class sizes and there's less individual help for sure. I can really tell a difference. Um, the teachers are kind of losing focus on the people that need help most, so I can really tell a difference. But, you know, the, the insidious effect that the thing you don't see is, you know, especially for someone like teachers, in terms of homework, English teachers, the difference between grading 35 essays and grading 44 or 45 essays is huge. Why are class sizes higher this year? Um, I don't know if they're any higher than they were last year. Um, I think they're similar to where they were the year before. Um, prior to that, class sizes were, were smaller. Part of it is just kind of uh, not having necessarily any more funding to bring those class sizes down. Um, and, you know, hopefully that gets remedied in the near future. But a lot of it has to do just with the sheer amount of money that we have for funding based on the number of students we have in the building. The central office. Every, I mean, everybody in the building from uh, principal on down, you know, it's, it has to feel the stress when, uh, when the numbers of people, the number of contacts you have every day, you know, just keeps going up. Teachers, as well as students, struggle too. How have class sizes this year affected your teaching? It's made it more difficult for me as a teacher to be able to get to know my students and to be able to watch the students who are kind of falling, falling between the cracks, hard time keeping up with them. I'm having a hard time remembering the names of all of my students because I have so many and it's harder for my students because they need help and I can't get to all of them. This week for our five minutes of fame reporter Brett Overbold went out and met with Jaden Bowman also known as Tony Pepperoni about his special musical talent. Student celebrities everywhere this is why you should care about five minutes of fame. Yeah. Pizza gang, ooh, yeah. Tony Pep, yeah. Pizza gang, ooh, 
Pizza gang, pizza gang, pizza gang, pizza gang, pizza gang, pizza gang, pizza gang. Ask my boss for a new race. My fans love my pizza. So how long have you been making music for? Uh, I'd have to say roughly around two years. I got, well, the reason I started making it, I got kind of bored, but more or less I just was using Weird Al Yankovic as an influence because it's more of like parodies is kind of like, it's a funny thing. So it's like, I got that and I thought it'd be good to use my, my, uh, my brand and just use that as a uh, way to be comedic. Uh, how do you feel your music has impacted you or others? Uh, I feel like for me, it gives me something to do when I don't have anything to do, and it lets me use some of my like uh, my comedic like lines that I think of that are funny. Um, but I think it also brings out a lot of like smiles from other people who would listen to the music. Uh, would you say you get more negative or positive support from your friends or family or anyone else? I'd say I'd say definitely positive. Uh, it's usually a hit and it's supported by a lot of people. If you want to buy my merch, sweatshirts are $25, shirts are 12 and st uh, stay ready for my newest album, Pizza World. Pizza's hot, grab a slice, that's how I already know you're hungry. As many students think about life after high school and what their dreams are, reporter Grace Cobb went out and asked students what their dream jobs are, and that brings us to the RQT of this week. It's the random question thing, ding. What's your dream job? To be a professional musician. Uh, my dream job is to either be a psychotherapist or a farm vet. Uh, currently in my rapping career, which I'm currently pursuing. My dream job is to be an actress. My dream job is to be a cast member of a national production on a Broadway touring show. So I actually have two. I want to join the Navy and do uh, naval aviation, and then after that I want to do mortuary science and work in a funeral home. Why do you want to be that? I've always had a um, talent for music, and I've been suggested by many people that I would be a great musician. So, um, For the psychotherapists, I really want to see how what goes through their minds and like what affected them to become like how they are. And for farm vet, I really, I grew up with animals a lot, so I kind of enjoy being around them and like helping them out. Um, for me, it brings me enjoyment and it gives me something to do when I'm bored. Uh, I just like performing and storytelling and being on stage. Um, I love theater, I love doing it. Um, I just kind of, I found my place in it. And um, I just believe in the power of theater and it would be so cool to travel the country sharing my gifts with hundreds of people every day who want to see that. I feel like the Navy would be an interesting experience and it would also pay for my schooling. And for the funeral home, it's not really as much competition because a lot of people don't feel comfortable working around dead people. Now let's head over to the sports with Jordan. What's going on, Saints? I'm Jordan Haller and this is sports. Last Sunday, I had the privilege of attending the Minnesota Vikings game. They had an outstanding game and beat the Denver Broncos 23-27. The Vikings were down 20-0 at halftime. The second half, the Vikings came back and put up 7 points in the third quarter and 20 in the fourth. It was the fourth quarter and Denver had their last drive. They brought it all the way down to the end zone and were trying to get one in to win the game. But our defense shut them down and won the game. The Vikings are second in the NFC North with an 8-3 record. They are the only NFC North team who was undefeated at home. Skull Vikings! The Minnesota Gophers were undefeated until they played Iowa. They are ranked first in the Big Ten West. Their record is now 9-1. Sky Yuma! The boys basketball team recently started up and they have been having practice. They played Elk River over the weekend on Saturday. The girls basketball team has a home game tomorrow against the Blaine Bengals, or should I say the Little Kittens. They also have another home game at 2 on Saturday. The boys hockey team had a scrimmage fest in Duluth over the weekend on Saturday. Their first game is tomorrow away against Armstrong. The girls hockey team has a game against Superior at 6 tomorrow. They also play Prior Lake at 1 on Friday and they play the beginning on Saturday. The wrestling team has a meet at Hastings High School at 9.30 on Saturday. The dance team has a home kick meet today at 6.30. They took third at their jazz conference meet on the 12th. The girls gymnastics team is still practicing hard and getting prepared for upcoming meets. Here's some footage about some of the younger team members. 
Hey Saints, it's Katie Mickelberg, and today we're going to be taking a leap into the new gymnastics season. What are some of your goals for this season? Round up that can't be backed up. Some of my goals for the season is to bond more together as a team and perfect and learn new skills. Round off back handspring. Probably for me would to get my round off back handspring back tuck. How does it feel competing at a high school level in seventh grade? Nerve wracking. Yeah, it's very nerve wracking and it's really fun. How does it feel competing at a high school level in eighth grade? Uh, it's pretty fun. Um, you get to learn new skills and like learn how to cheer on teammates and stuff. It's very stressful sometimes, but at times it is also fun. So far, how have your practices been? They've been good. I've been working on getting back into the swing of things because I've had a pretty long break. Um, mine have been very good. I like kind of being with older girls. What or who is your biggest motivation? Um, my biggest motivation is probably like Olympians and like big athletes like that that like show that you can do it. Um, for me, it would probably be Allie and Summer because they're really good. How much does the relationship of you and your teammates affect how you perform? A lot, because the closer you are with your teammates, you get more like comfortable screwing up around them and stuff. I think it takes a huge effect on being strong as a team, so then you compete well and practice well. This Athlete of the Week is Jay Skodow. He is a really good bowler, and reporter Tate Skolquist went out and talked to him. How did uh, your season end up? Um, our season ended well. We tied Cambridge 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, Overall, our best season that we've had recently. Individually, um, I did the best in the conference. I took first, um, was the most outstanding player, and I have a chance to go to state uh, for singles for my school. Uh, biggest takeaway is even though you had a bad day, um, there's more days to come, and everybody has a bad day. That's it for sports this week, folks. Check in next week for more progress on our winter sports. Make sure to check out our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook account, and our website, thesfhscrier.com, for more news. That's all we have for this week. Stay safe, Saints.